Hi, I'm Jackson Jeffcoat, defense end for the University of Texas. Uh, I drink a lot of water throughout the day, um, and I think I'm hydrated going into practice, but sometimes I still cramp. Uh, is there anything I can do differently? Great question, Jackson, and I have noticed that you are very well hydrated coming into practice, but I think what happens a lot of times, and especially this is common in, in hot, humid climates like we have, is you may be coming in well hydrated, but haven't gotten enough electrolytes in. So try to make sure um, that with that meal prior to practice, a couple of hours prior to practice, you get some uh, fruits and vegetables, some low-fat dairy, even some salty foods or putting a little bit of salt on your food. Get some pickles in, uh, get some pretzels in, so get some of those salty foods in. And then once you arrive to practice, make sure you're not only drinking water, but you're drinking uh, sports drinks that have electrolytes in them or adding supplemental electrolytes to those sports drinks because a lot of times we see cramping ha happen um, not because of a uh, lack of hydration, but really a lack of electrolytes being available. So let's make sure we get those in for you. My name is Ellen Lobb, and I'm on the women's swim team here at the University of Texas. I have trouble eating before morning practice but I feel like I need to because by the end of practice, my body feels really heavy and tired. So what foods can I eat that will sit well in my stomach? Ellen, that's a great question, and you are definitely not alone. I get this question a lot from student athletes, um, and, but it's especially important, especially for a sport like yours, like swimming, uh, where you're gonna be out in the water for a long time, you're gonna be needing a lot of fuel, and your body's definitely telling you that it needs some more fuel. And so what I tell people is that you need to practice different types of fuel that, to find the right one for you, but basically what you wanna remember is the closer it is to your competition or your workout, the less solid you want your food to be, or so if you only have 15 to 30 minutes, Minutes, maybe you want to stick to liquid calories like sports drinks. Some people can tolerate chocolate milk right close up to that workout. You could, might try some, a smoothie, a small portion of a smoothie right to the, close to that workout. If you feel like you can tolerate a little bit more solid food first thing in the morning, you could do something like a piece of toast with a small amount of nut butter and some jelly or some honey. You could do a piece of fruit or even uh, an applesauce, which is a little bit uh, easier to digest as well. So you wanna stick to uh, carbohydrates. If the closer that you are to your workout, you wanna stick primarily to carbohydrates. And again, if you kind of have an uneasy stomach, sometimes those liquid calories like sports drinks um, or even a little bit of a smoothie can go down and, and settle a little bit easier in your stomach. My name is Haley Eckerman and I play volleyball at the University of Texas. My question is, we travel a lot for volleyball games and I'm not eating as often and I don't want to eat out. Do you have any tips for me? Yeah, Haley, that's a really good question, and I know traveling is just sort of a, a way of life for a lot of student athletes, and it can get tiring eating out, but I think one of the most important things for you to remember is to plan and to maybe pack some, thing, some food to have with you. Um, so that I want you to look at your travel itinerary, look at the time that you might have available to take some snacks and to have a snack with you, and have some of those tried and true foods that you know that you like to snack on and that are going to settle easy in your stomach and that you could maybe eat maybe when you're not feeling too hungry, but you know it's a time that you need to refuel. Hi, I'm Jacob Feltz. I'm on the baseball team and I'm a catcher. I wear a lot of equipment during the games and I sweat a lot during games and practice. How much should I be drinking to stay hydrated? Jacob, great question. And the first thing that I would encourage you to do is do a sweat rate. Figure out how much you're sweating during those typical practices whenever it's hot outside, you have all your equipment on. Um, and then try to keep up with your sweat rate by knowing um, what 2% of your losses are and trying to stay ahead of that. Another rule of thumb is to try to take in at least half a cup or four big gulps, four ounces, about every 10 to 20 minutes. So every time that you get a break, try to take a good big, four big gulps of fluids. So you want to try to stay ahead of it rather than waiting towards the end of the practice whenever you're feeling really thirsty and tired. Hi, I'm Nathan Thornhill. I'm a pitcher for the Texas baseball team. When I'm pitching, I don't really get hungry or thirsty. How do I know if I should be eating or drinking anything during a game? Nathan, great question. You really don't want to wait until you're feeling hungry to take in that fuel. If you know that you're going to be exercising or performing for an hour or more, it's a good idea to go ahead and plan to get that carbohydrate in. You want to stay ahead of those uh, carbohydrate needs so that you don't run out of fuel and start decreasing your performance. If you know that you're going to be exercising for an hour or more, the rule of thumb is to take 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrate in every 15 to 20 minutes. Um, so go ahead and start taking that in. You can do it uh, with sports drinks, you can do that with fruit, you can do that with sports foods, or really a combination of those. Just try to find one that sits well on your stomach and that can be your tried and true food for games as well as practices.